please thank you yeah so we'll start the meeting officially now i will be putting everybody on mute mode kindly stay muted unless uh, it's you you are asked to speak or you are going to be the speaker so please bear with me meeting call to order kindly rise for the national anthem i will be playing it digitally please stay on mute mode we sing with full josh and full pride janagan mana adhinayak jay he bharat bhagya vidhata पंजाब सिंध गुजरात मराठा द्राविड उत्कल बंगा विंध्य हिमाचल यमुना गंगा उच्चल जलधि तरंगा तव शुभ नामे जागे तव शुभ आशीष मागे गाहे तव जय गाथा जन गण मंगल दायक जय हे भारत भाग्य विधाता जय हे जय हे जय हे जय 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 हे भारत की। वेरी वेरी वार्म गुड इवनिंग इट्स अ रियली वार्म इवनिंग बींग मिड मे गुड इवनिंग टू एवरीबडी इट इज इंडीड एर ऑनर एंड प्रिवेज टू हैव विथ अस टूडे डॉक्टर हेमन जोशी हू हेज बीन इंस्ट्रूमेंटल टूडे इन लेटिंग आर यवतमार प्रोजेक्ट हैपन हिज बीन डूइंग ट्रमेंडस वर्क मोर अबाउट हिम आफ्टर दिस टू थ्री मिनिट्स ऑफ आर यूजल अनाउंसमेंट सो first things first on 17th i think we having the official visit by dr mayuresh barke uh, district governor elect so i would kindly ask rajiv bhai to mute himself incoming president rajiv bhai to please uh, declare the timing of his meeting and the purpose of his meeting and also the district training assembly announcement to be made by rajiv bhai it will only take half a minute so rajiv bhai where are you please unmute yourself and make the announcement Rajiv, I think Rajiv has, I think by mistake, maybe has exited the meeting. Okay, more about that later. Twenty second, I think we've done with a lot of projects this time. We are done with the TV project. We've also executed the Yavatmar project along with Dr. Heman Zoshi, and the Polio Fund project, of course, awaits. Another good news I would want to share with all of you is that as a play, uh, we have sent all the TRF checks. Which uh, committed by our club members to a very very happy uh, happy avenue chair Yaku Beta Si Wala. So in total we had committed five thousand dollars. We have exceeded exceeded our uh, target, our promise even in these challenging times. And we've sent an entire uh, TRF check total of five thousand three hundred fifty dollars. So a huge huge round of applause to all the suburbanites and a heartfelt gratitude from my side. For having completed target, which we all of us made together, the BOD. So on behalf of BOD, I thank on behalf of Smriti TRF Chair. I thank every member who has contributed to the Rotary Foundation. Uh, happy news coming up. We have our virtual Charter Night celebration on twenty second May. Our Charter Night was over on third uh, April. As uh, I'm telling all the Rotary non Rotarians over here, the day our club started eighteen years back. After that, we've done a plethora of projects. In in various avenues, and we've worked a lot with farmers. We've worked a lot with educational institutes. Our club has had a rich history of uh, uh, doing projects and executing them, uh, not just success successfully, but also sustainable projects. So, Suburban is a very young club, eighteen years old, not old in terms of uh, Rotary language, and we hope that we can do more work with inspiring people like Dr. Heman Joshi with us. So, Charter Night celebrations coming up on twenty second Saturday. Everybody wanted no outsiders, but no outside singers. So, we are going to have a Pancham Da night. Guys, get ready, ready, ho jao. 
आई एंड आशीष आर ऑर्गेनाइजिंग होल इवेंट विल पुट अप हाउ मेनी सॉन्ग्स पर पर्सन वरना तुम लोग रात भर गाओगे तो विल पुट अटल यूर इन दिटल बिट ऑफ यू नो ट्विस्ट एंड टर्न प्रोमिस टू बी अ ब्यूटिफुल इवनिंग गेट रेडी की पंचम सॉन्ग रेडी इट कुड बी सोलोज इट कुड बी ड्यूएट्स so that's the thing which is coming up some surprises are coming up your way that day at home uh, on 22nd so looking forward to 22nd i think the announcements regarding 17 and dta will be made by rajiv bhai at the end of the session when he comes in now i request uh, bhushan mule uh, past president bhushan mule who introduced dr himan joshi to us to please formally introduce this man whose principle seems to be kisi ki muskurahaton pe ho nisar kisi ka dard mil sake to le udhar jeena isi ka naam hai so over to you bhushan to introduce hemant to all of us thank you apurva a very wonderful way of introducing hemant by you apurva uh, it's my uh, privilege to introduce all of you my school batchmate um, uh, my one bench junior karan to ek bench mage basayza hemant joshi uh, a compassionate human being driven by passion for doing good to the society and uh, uh, basically he is it engineer uh, he has done phd in it from arkansas and uh, in 2010 he started ngo save indian farmers uh, with wide base of 200 people in north america as well as other countries including india But the core focus areas of organization are sustainable agriculture the sustainable agriculture initiative in, includes leveraging eco friendly tools and techniques to reduce capital cost uh, the second area focus is water conservation water conservation in this they are into various watershed management techniques then third focus is rural health management uh, rural health management in rural health management they focuses on they focus on making primary health care easily accessible to people fourth is rural education through rural education initiative they aim to leverage digi- digital media to make education accessible to not just kids in rural but also the women and family communities then counseling and livelihood management uh, the main ob- objective of uh, this initiative is to provide counseling services to farmers and their families in distress and empower them to earn a better livelihood by helping them avail various government schemes then microfinancing Uh, we are we ourselves rotary are in uh, into micro we are into micro financing and uh, this ngo is also in micro financing uh, making micro loans available to poorest of poor as a significantly low interest rate especially to the women farmers and entrepreneurs as so as to, they can supplement their agricultural income and live a better life save indian farmers is collaborating with ngos in 12 different states and has made an impact on countless lives by the way he is also board member and chief technology officer of claim genius and he also he is also chief executive officer and board member of udrantar both companies based in usa when man is into such a varied uh, fields from social work to the it uh, it, it is but natural that he find difficult to manage different time zones uh, personal life with kids finding time for personal life with kids and work and philanthropy but he has done it nicely for last 10 years and i'm sure he will do for n number of years in future his passions are uh, field of computer science especially artificial intelligence indian classical music and oh this is different emotions that lead to actions with this i introduce our today's chief speaker chief guest hemant joshi hemant welcome the forum is all yours and we are proud that you are also thana it like us i i am also very proud ani saglyat pahile ni bhushan maji evdi changli introduction tu aishat kadi keli nasel tyamule aaj rotary mule tula maya shi changle bolala lagte i am very happy about that पण आमची बॅचच तशी होती इज इट ओके आय जस्ट बिफोर आय स्टार्ट आय कॅन टॉक इन इंग्लिश मराठी हिंदी 
preferably english okay. more because we have a cosmopolitan crowd sure, but of sure. course hindi marathi is also welcome kai problem nahi yeah, sure uh, either is fine uh, so i'll i'll stick with english uh, to the best of uh, my abilities and then some words uh, we i might go into my native language zarur but, zarur uh, <laughs> sir eh man ami thane ta so tu amerikat es हो मी अमेरिकेत आहे पण मी तुमच्यापेक्षा जास्त चांगलं मराठी बोलू शकतो अशी माझी आशा आहे प्लीज गो ओके सो थँक्यू सो मच एव्हरीबडी फॉर द वॉम वेलकम अँड आय 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 जॉईन दिस मिटिंग विथ ऑल ह्युमिलिटी आय कम्प्लिटली अंडरस्टँड वर्क दॅट रोटरी डज इज सो इनॉर्मस इज सो एक्सपॅन्सिव्ह अँड इट्स सो इन ग्लोबल इन दॅट नेचर uh i feel uh, that uh, this is probably not a right forum for me to uh, get appreciated but, but i do feel that there is also need to collaborate and join hands i was talking to uh, smriti ji uh, about a week ago a little over a week ago and the power of uh, collaboration is what i want to talk about today as a individual and also as a uh, somebody who represents save indian farmers so i'm going to have my discussion in two parts uh, allow me to spare first few minutes about 5 uh, 7 minutes on the covid relief work that i am doing as a individual and uh, we'll talk about that uh, about the work that we are doing in yavatmal as well as in beet district uh, i hope uh, you find that uh, encouraging uh, one of the topics that was being discussed when i joined this call was the fear uh, and i want to address the fear of covid in many different ways how it is affecting us so we'll talk about that first few minutes and then the rest of the conversation would be as part of uh, what i have learned and what i have seen and what i, have, I can share with you all uh, as part of uh, as founder and secretary of save indian farm so we'll do the both presentations one after the other the first one let me share my screen so i can get started yeah i have allowed you to share screen yeah yeah so uh, i'm i'm sharing my screen uh, hopefully just let me know you can see my screen somebody okay good thank you so uh, the work i'm doing here is as a individual and i want to stress that because uh, save indian farmers primarily focuses on uh, farmer related activities and projects so when it comes to covid relief uh if it was for farmers only uh save indian farmers gets involved and uh, especially in areas where we could get farmers as well as non farming community as uh, covid patients uh sif save indian farmers has not stepped in but that has not stopped us from getting involved so what is going on on the covid front uh to kind of simply talk more about uh, how things are well, let me see if i can go to the next screen there we are there are there are two particular projects that i want to talk about there are four different projects we are doing uh, one in one is in garhwal uh, uttarakhand another one is in bundelkhand uh, which is a, a region that spans across three states in india and then these two are specifically from maharashtra for most of you you would identify with these the other reason why i am mentioning these two is because yavatmal project that i am about to share with you is actually uh, supported by rotary club suburban uh, 3142 the current rotary club that we are part of and uh, it is because of their uh, support that we are able to start this so when it comes to uh, understanding what covid is doing to all of us okay the reactions are very different for different people and it is natural some of us are afraid and we are afraid for a reason and uh, i want to sit here and tell you that uh, getting vaccinated is important getting uh, taking all the precautions is important wearing mask is important staying social distance on zoom meetings like this is is very important but at the same time it doesn't help by just being afraid of what is coming and what is happening there is a lot of negative news in that sense and uh, i am not challenging any of those news uh, they are they have facts uh, in them Uh, i'll give you facts in yavatmal they have about 1200 cases positive cases every day and for a small town uh, that's quite high in the first wave they used to have about uh, 50 or 37 38 cases uh, a day so this second wave has hit 
rural areas significantly uh, compared to the first wave that is the first point i wanted to make the second problem that i have uh, noticed and you guys know as well is that most of the health infrastructure in our country is based in cities most of the cities have hospitals uh, and uh, of course district places also have hospitals but they are either not well equipped or they are they don't have the uh, right technicians and right training uh, for that so those all those things matter dindayal bahuuddeshiya prasarak mandal is a 37 year old ngo as of now and their primary focus has been farmer and pardhi community pardhi are the nomad tribes that primarily live off of uh, uh, hunting uh, so th these are very common in that uh, part of the maharashtra state and that is what their primary focus has been but what has happened is covid as a second wave hit uh, many of these ngos have come forward uh, to serve their local communities and uh, our uh, our association with uh, din daya uh, dbpm i call them uh, with dbpm allowed me to ask them what is it that we can do and one of the things that they could think of was to convert their existing uh, student hostel which is empty anyway because they had to send all send all the students back to their homes they said we could convert this into a 50 bed unit and we could do it literally in a week's time and uh, that was their uh, proposal and uh, i said can you actually do it uh, so literally it was monday that they told me about it over phone and i said uh, can i see some action send me photos send me let me see what all you can do because they had to change the circuits to a higher amperage so that they can run some of the medical equipment uh, they cannot get uh, medical board certification to run a hospital because that requires certain set of norms it in fact it's i think a 6 to 8 months drawn process to be certified as a hospital but as a covid care unit they could get certified with the help of the district collector so they have got the permission from the district collector they had they could arrange for 50 beds and mattresses and things like that and they anticipate about two months worth of uh, kind of running this covid facility for about two months so with that we started uh, we uh, i got the budget proposal from them i sent it to different ngos and organizations i approached bhushan uh, during that same time and uh, rotary club yavatmal had also stepped in by that time to provide some relief so uh, with those things in place uh, what have we done so far by no means this is a success let me just uh, put it very candidly uh, that we should define success as the day when we have to close this unit when we are no longer required that will be the definition of success in my opinion as of now the number of patients that they handle daily keeps going up and down there are sometimes less sometimes more patients but the facility was set up in 5 to 6 days on may 2nd it became operational they currently have uh, ability to run it for 2 months four oxygen concentrators have been uh, acquired uh, they also have oxygen cylinders which can be refilled if needed they have a, a ambulance van with which they can transport patients uh, from covid care unit to the hospital district hospital and also from district hospital to covid care unit they have also been using these vans to transport patients from their rural communities into uh, covid care unit so there are several scenarios that i am also learning about uh, first scenario is uh, both husband and wife uh, have tested positive and there is nobody to take care of the kids so in that case uh, they have been able to admit both husband and wife to the covid care unit and the kids are actually taken care of at the other facility which runs school so they have 24/7 uh, nursing care day care almost you can think of that they are also managing outside this that is case one case 2 is uh, there is a lot of misinformation Mis misinformation like uh, either uh, people think that uh, it is it is not uh, it is let me put it this way it is uh, okay to not take care of a covid patient because they are going to die anyway and uh, we know for a fact uh, when you talk to the doctors they will tell you that if it is detected early when you get the first signs of covid and if you can treat it before things get out of hand then it is much better uh, treatable uh, virus and so with that in mind if they get a uh, information about that from a village or from a particular community they will actually go and give them make that offer to them to move them to covid care unit they 
are doing this for, to achieve two things. Okay, one, in order to provide the patient with the actual care they need. And second, it actually also helps them isolate it from the rest of the family. Because if you are living in a 10 feet by 12 feet hut or in a whichever small house, it is impossible to stay isolated and quarantined within that same room. So the only possibility is to move them to a facility where they will be taken care of. These are non-critical care patients. And currently they are supporting 10 patients. Uh, as of today, doctors and nurses are available. Uh, I have al already mentioned Rotary Club Yavatma, Rotary Club Suburban Thane, and Maharashtra Foundation in US have sponsored this project uh, and all its expenses currently. But I want to take a little bit of time on uh, telling you importance of non-critical care. So this is less glamorous work, I would call it. Uh, what ideally what we all want to do is to save lives. Ideally what we all want to do is to work on critical care patients. But to be honest with you, unless you're a medical doctor working in that hospital, you have no role to play there. The only role you can play is to do peripheral things. And uh, peripheral things are equally important. I'll give you examples, okay? If you are able to get oxygen concentrators available to those facilities, that would be of great help. If you are able to get some of the ventilators and concentrators repaired, that would be of great help. We are gonna talk about uh, such one individual in the BEAD project where there was need for that. But that is the help. Uh, funding, yes, uh, when they need money, we can provide them funding. But apart from all this, the main goal should be that if you consider Nagpur, for example, Yavatmar is about 100 plus kilometers away from Nagpur. Nagpur currently, they have about uh, 10 days wait time to get a hospital bed. And we know 10 days is too long for a COVID positive patient uh, who is in need of a bed to wait uh, just uh, that that is that is not going to have a positive outcome to tell you the truth so what we need to be focused on is how do we take care of non critical care patients in such a way that it reduces the stress and burden on the critical care facilities and hospitals so beat district hospital has tied up with covid care unit that is being run by dbpm and so if there is a patient for example, whose HR CT score is above five, they are admitted to that hospital because now we need to start taking critical care of them. If it's above seven, then they start with remdesivir and some of the other medical options. But they are able to manage that capacity within the district hospital. And either once your HR CT score uh, comes below five, or if your SpO2 oxygen level comes uh, above 95, then you are moved to this uh, non-critical care unit where the patient is still tested positive, so they still need to be isolated. But at the same time, the need for critical care is not that urgent or immediate. And because this exchange can happen between these facilities and hospitals, it is reducing the burden on hospitals tremendously, the resources, and even for doctors, it is easier to manage patients without having to listen to some political influence, right? Because otherwise the only way to get bed is get some person to call some person in the hospital and then the bed is made available to you. But at the cost of what? So at the, not at the cost of uh, not providing care for the people who are in need of it, but by moving non-critical care patients to this kind of facilities and then uh, being able to uh, provide critical care to those who need. So these are some of the photos. Uh, you will notice that none of the photos include patients that is by design. We do not want to uh, invade their privacy, but I do want to give you updates uh, to the best of my abilities on this project as well. So some of these photos you have seen, uh, and I'll keep sending more photos as and when they become available. Uh, we, uh, Bhushan is also part of that group where we keep track of what is going on. So Vivekanand uh, hostel photo is on the left top. Some of the facility, the four oxygen concentrators that they have, and also some of the doctors who were visiting uh, every day, there is a, a doctor that is assigned by the government that visits this facility, checks up on all the patients morning and evening times, and the nurses are available full time. So that's the Yavatmal project. Moving on to BEAD project, the scope here is BEAD, as you guys know, is a very large district in Maharashtra. In fact, it's one of the largest districts in India, I would say, out of the 600 plus districts we have. 
Manu Luke is an NGO that has been there for last three, four decades. It was set up by led uh, Dr. Dwarkadas Lohia, uh, and uh, it's a grassroots NGO. It's set up by the people for the people. In that sense, their primary focus is water conservation. They uh, participate along with Pani Foundation's uh, Water Cup, uh, and they also uh, focus on rural health. So again, this NGO has stepped up uh, in that region to help uh, the Medical College of Bir. because that's the primary uh, hospital facility they have at the district level and in that region they are setting up 11 centers uh, to serve about 600 patients again the facility is meant to be temporary so uh, the 11 centers that are being set up uh, out of which six centers have been set up so far and these are either uh, a school that is been vacated and then now the school is being converted to a primary care unit for say 70 50 patients and so you add these numbers up uh, their goal is to set up set it up for 600 patients currently 280 patients are being served 375 beds are being made available they are working very closely with the local medical college there and they had a issue of uh, non functional ventilators uh, i don't know if you have anand kolhatkar uh, joined who has joined this call but uh, i'm going to give you some details out of the 25 ventilators that they had not working they had received these brand new ventilators from pm cares fund but uh, they were not working and uh, i don't know if uh, how many of you know about the main purpose of ventilators but oxygen concentrators and oxygen cylinders are basically applied uh, externally and they provide they help you breathe externally It means you breathe but they provide you oxygen that you need to breathe ventilators is a a little bit invasive unit so you have to actually intubate the person and provide the oxygen directly to their lungs so that their lungs can function and ventilator is usually one of the uh, steps where the patient needs it in a critical condition so ventilators are typically operated by hospitals so they had received uh, ventilators some of them were not working they do not have a technician to even operate a ventilator as of this moment so 11 concentrator uh, sorry ventilators were fixed and uh, uh, this is actually anand's photo here on the uh, left top corner uh, working on one of the ventilators along with uh, mr vinay mahamuni uh, they both run a small company based out of thane he is another thane another saraswati secondary school uh, uh, person and if bhushan says that i sat on a bench behind him i actually sat next to anand so that's how close the friendship is but uh, at the same time when people run away from the danger where the covid cases are high and the hospitals are full of these patients people like anand actually walk into those facilities to actually see how they can help and that is incredible in terms of what the human spirit is as to what we can do to actually help some of these other photos that we are seeing are the beds being set up uh, this is uh, aniket lohia Uh, who is actually overseeing uh, the work that is being done to set up patients in different facilities he himself had tested positive but since then he has quarantined himself at home and he is using phone and uh, whatsapp calls as the main kind of way to help people that are in need of that help uh, he just uh, got tested negative again so he is doing fine he is also recovering from that effect but for people like him uh, it is very important to kind of uh, figure out a way to help people going forward so about 6 lakh rupees is what they need for serving 100 patients uh, and there are 11 centers that they have planned six so far there are still working on setting up five more centers about uh, 300 more beds need to be set up so the question is how can you help and i am appealing to each and every one of you as a individual as a rotarian as a indian to see how you can help so i am i'll share this presentation by the way you can also take a screenshot if you want information you can reach out to me on whatsapp you can reach out to bhushan or any of us uh, in whichever way possible uh, you can reach out to aniket ji directly on his gmail email address i am not sure you want to talk we will right share now. the numbers oh. human we will share the yeah. numbers Uh, what I can the do is I will number. take the numbers of Bhushan and I will put them up on the uh, yes. group. And anybody who wants to help is more than happy. Will be more than happy to do that. Then. Absolutely, absolutely. Because I and have the recording of this session, which I'll be sharing with everybody. Any which. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. So there are details uh, uh, provided to uh, kind of how to donate, how to spread the word. If you want, 
to ask questions you can always ask me as an individual i will answer to the best of my ability but you can also ask uh, the secretary and uh, main uh, in person in charge there uh, mr aniket lohia uh, he is in bid right now and he might be able to answer some of your questions as well so th that is the appeal with which i wanted to end this particular uh, conversation about covid relief what we'll do is uh, i'll switch gears to uh, seven in farmers activity which are not specifically focused on covid but uh, i at least wanted to give uh, everybody understanding of what we do and how we do it so let me share that presentation and we'll start talking about that so this is a presentation that i am making but it is not prepared by me and i'll tell you who are the people who worked on it but i i wanted to give a title that actually makes sense how do you help people you like be not meet in your life right uh, especially for somebody like me sitting here in us how do i try to uh, help people how do we as seven indian farmers try to help people that we think need help and we are not going to meet them we are not going to actually see what happens uh, when you provide that help so that was the main question with which this organization was started in 2011 when few of us got together we wanted to uh, get together and find out uh, if there is a way for us to sit so far away and still be able to make an impact on people's life uh, bhushan uh, one help i need from you is uh, there is a lot to cover here so do a time check uh, i want to take uh, another 15 to 20 minutes on this uh, if we need to take more time i would rather ask answer questions and then as part yeah, of we, that we i can have a window till about 8:30 Okay. Uh, Somebody do a time check for me. Yeah, yeah. we'll do that. Don't worry. At okay. by eight thirty, we can end the session. We can have a Q and A, so we can wind up by around quarter to nine. Sounds good. Sounds good. So, uh, presentation is actually prepared by Anand Chaudhary. He's a project director uh, based out of US. Works for an IT company. Uh, Doctor Yashwantra Yadav is a PhD from Tata Institute of Social Sciences, and he's on the ground volunteer uh, based in Solapur, India. Rekha Mushre is the core committee member and a project director. a base out of usa uh, we will talk about some of the organization objectives and projects and discussion bhushan has given everybody introduction of the uh, different uh, areas six different areas in which we focus i am actually going to talk about five of them microfinancing is one area that i am going to leave out today uh, first of all because it is very clear uh, to almost everybody on what the microfinancing does uh, the only difference i guess would be that we do microfinancing through rangde Uh, which is our partner organization in india and through through them we have supported uh, women farmers uh, to get loans uh, for goat grazing for pineapple farming for rice paddy farming uh, at 2% rate of interest and uh, basically the money that we get back from uh, this we again reinvest in other women farmers so that's the one project that i will not talk about because it's uh, frankly very massive and i don't think there is much new to it than what Uh, you can do on rangde.org for example okay so with that let's move on to the next thing uh, about us we are a volunteer driven ngo established in 2011 i was one of the members who started it uh, there are other individuals who started it with me and uh, they all deserve a credit uh, as of 10 years fast forward we have about 200 members in united states our youngest members are 7 and 8 years old Uh, these are people uh, who are focused on our objectives i'll talk about them uh, in a very different way and then uh, we work with uh, about 20 ngo partners in 12 different states uh, so far uh, i think that number should be 13 now we just started our project in assam uh, with sankalp taru so it should be 21 ngos and 13 states uh, but our objectives are very clear we want to identify and analyze the important issues that are affecting india's farmers and spread awareness about it and not just farmer suicides actually spread awareness about it in general so some of our youngest members are focused on that they in their own ways are uh, focused on uh, raising awareness about uh, farmers and their issues uh, indian farmers and their issues whether it is here in us or uh, even in germany we have had uh, similar efforts in uh, australia we have had similar efforts and then uh, in india of course we also help the victims uh, of uh, families of the victims of suicide with sustainable means of livelihood 
to tell you the truth this is the second goal uh, helping the families of the victims uh, with sustainable means of livelihood is how i started my journey with claim uh, with uh, save indian farmers but uh, that has evolved i'll i'll tell you why and i'm in fact going to also share story of a person who changed my life uh, as a individual uh, focus area is water conservation uh, we focus on borewell recharge and rainwater harvesting so what's borewell recharge uh, think of borewell recharge as a, uh, a bank account okay savings bank account uh, a farmer who is in search of that water deep underground will uh, drill a borewell with the help of whichever company to go 100 200 even sometimes 300 400 feet underground to kind of search for water uh, which is the aquifer layer under the earth i mean the top soil uh, what happens is after some time that borewell runs dry and now you just have a hole in the ground that doesn't give you any water but if you start storing the water from monsoon season and send it down 200 300 feet for safe keeping then it's like a savings bank account that you can draw out of as much as you have put in right you can you can never have over you cannot overdraft uh, but you can always if you have put in 200 liters down there for safe keeping then you can get some out so we started with uh, kind of 10 bore wells that we restored in a pilot phase in 2016 and we could conserve 15 million liters of water the reason we i know these numbers is we actually put a unit there that measures the amount of inflow and outflow and that was very important for us to at least understand as a pilot how much water are we actually saving where is it going right so we since then we have expanded not only in maharashtra andhra pradesh but uh, sorry there is a typo there uh, madhya pradesh and uh, karnataka as well over 200 uh, farmers have benefited so far and 170 bore wells have been uh, recharged there are some cases where two farmers share the same bore well and that's why the numbers don't add up so how does it work so borewell recharge uh, we do that work with a, a sankalpa rural development society srds it's a karnataka hubli based uh, ngo that actually uh, does this work a borewell can be recharged for about uh, 20 to 22000 rupees and it requires certain material i'll show you photos as well but what we do is we provide half of that money for a farmer whose land size is less than 3 acres so that's what we define as a marginal farmer if your land size is less than 3 acres and if you have a dry bore well we will provide half the money 11000 rupees and for remaining half either the farmer has to put that money forward or they have to basically that money is for labor uh, to tell you the truth so most of the labor work can be done by the farmer and his uh, fellow farmers themselves through shramadan and they will save on their portion of the money and then the 11000 uh, to 12000 we provide for every bore well the usually srds representative goes there they hire local uh, kind of uh, masons and other people to kind of build this it's a smaller facility it doesn't have huge footprint you will see it as well but also it is important to educate villagers about rainwater harvesting so rainwater that comes down if a drop of that rainwater goes underground versus running away that has tremendous benefit to farmers especially in the april and may months of the year that those are usually the dry months uh, until the monsoon comes in june so instead of rain fed farming they can take second crop in november or december by the time monsoon has ended but they can still take a second crop and if you take two crops you can also start instead of mono cropping you can start multi cropping patterns so not take same crop every year in monsoon season you can try different things you also reduce the risk of depending on a single crop so we have done this in 25 different uh, villages in maharashtra as part of pani foundation work we also participate in that we also have provided a similar support in uttarakhand uh, for water ponds these are some of the examples i have been to this village uh, palaskhed uh, which is a village that used to get tankers uh, for 65 years since the month of march they are reliant on tankers for drinking water from for last 65 years they have been doing that and for last 3 years this is 2017 uh, work they not only participated in uh, uh, water cup and they actually came up, came up uh, in the third position in the entire state 
but they also focused on these uh, borewell recharge initiatives and uh, the person you see holding amrla there is dr yadav uh, he actually visits some of these sites and this is what the borewell actually looks like the borewell pipe is there we put cement rings around it and then the water that is actually in this tank right next to the person standing there it's uh, underneath it goes to this borewell and then it goes down 200 100 feet whatever however deep that borewell is moving on uh, with nyana prabodhini as a partner organization in 2019 we supported 17 villages uh, in the water cup competition and our commitment to these villages is uh, if you do the work for every 1 cubic meter that you dig for your trenches we will provide 1 hour of diesel and other expenses for the jcb the excavator and uh, maximum help we have provided is 1 lakh per village so for 17 villages we raised the money we uh, raised 17 lakhs and we encourage them we talk to them uh, we make phone calls uh, to them uh, individually whether it is 4 am in the morning uh, or uh, late night i'll show you some of the photos as well they conduct uh, we motivate villagers to do shramadan and uh, take their share of uh, the uh, efforts that are needed uh, the problem with marathwada region at least and we have done this work in maharashtra in marathwada as well as vidarbha but with the impact uh, that we have seen there is no shortage of drinking water paraskhed the village i was telling you about there is no shortage of drinking water there anymore they do not need uh, water tanker anymore uh, in fact that is a model village adopted by the chief minister at that time so they in fact have a atm kind of machine that gives out ro water so if you do any social work like cleaning your street you get some uh, cred creds if you will right and those points you can use to get ro purified water at any of these atms uh, not money wise but uh, water wise but uh, that that's amazing facility that they have built themselves uh, the money that they won in the water cup uh, if you ask me what they did with that money is majority of that money is actually used what they did was uh, for most of you you know that uh, farmers ask for free electricity right and uh, what this village has done uh, it will surprise you they actually uh, put that money in fixed deposit and uh, they also from the interest that they get they also pay the electricity electricity bill for the entire village every year for next 70 80 years they would be able to pay their electricity bills so they do not ask for any favors from rest of the citizens of maharashtra to get free electricity they actually pay for their electricity from the water cup money that they won and they are not only using that money wisely they are actually using it to pay for what they need be uh, kind of uh, aware of uh, how much water they are consuming so they have very simple rules i have been to this village and on the main village panchayat they have these rules that they have come up with the first rule says that uh, we will not farm for these produce for example they have decided to not produce sugarcane in the entire village even though that's in the heartland of sugarcane they do not uh, grow sugarcane because they know it takes lot of water they also have a rule there somewhere written which says as soon as the river stops flowing nobody will put their water pumps to take water out nobody will take because uh, river stops flowing means there is now stagnant water that water needs to go down instead of pumping it out 24/7 and giving it to your crops let's be sustainable so they have come up with these rules and that has shown uh, balu guruji is the teacher from that village that transformed that particular village just to tell you the story of that individual but rest of the points you see it gives food and nutritional security this there are several impacts of that okay and this is the shramadan work in avasgao in bid district this is 2019 last year we could not do any of these activities because of lockdown and this year as well doesn't look like we will be able to do any of the water conservation activities but in arbuzwadi in parbani district this was the uh, gram sabha shramadan photo is from avasgao uh, this is a uh, stream broadening and deepening uh, work uh, for the existing stream we do this uh, we also uh, widen the streams uh, this is in pathan village in parbani district this is different pathan than what you know the impact of borewell recharge in bid district is tremendous 23 borewells in bid district alone 1.5 million liters water conserved uh, we have 
also uh, supported this for kitchen gardens overall water table seems to have increased uh, we are finding more green fodder for the uh, livestock in the months of march april may which we used to not have and farmers are able to take second crop which i mentioned earlier organic farming is the next focus area uh, we we have educated farmers about benefits of organic farming versus traditional farming uh, in fact sendriya sheti right uh, in marathi it is called sendriya sheti has become a bad word in villages i'll tell you why because the amount of knowledge that farmers have and what is organic and what is not is so limited i'll give you an example if you grow cotton and if you do not use any any chemical fertilizers if you just use the traditional uh, farming methods and if you grow cotton like that it should be called organic uh, farming but it is not the reason is the cotton seeds the only cotton seeds available in majority of india are bt cotton which are hybrid uh, seeds they are genetically modified seeds and those are the only seeds available indigenous seeds are almost non existent in rural india not just maharashtra anywhere what that means is if that cotton is produced it still does not get the label as organic farming cotton so farmers were being told that okay you if you do this you'll get more yield but they don't actually get more yield so what we started focusing on is instead how much money they can save by not using chemicals and still produce better yield so the first experiment we did was in yavatmal uh, with 40 farmers we told them to give us one acre of their land and do farming the uh, kind of organic way instead of using chemicals and if the crop yield was not there then we said that we will pay you for that loss and that was the risk that we had to take at that time we partnered with iit mumbai's dr yash uh, uh, hunkraskar dr hunkraskar from iit mumbai and he is agricultural uh, knowledgeable domain expert and he was the one on field uh, guiding farmers on how to create uh, local pesticides and uh, fertilizers from the leaves and other materials available in the village itself and with that uh, those 40 farmers uh, had one and half times the yield of their traditional chemical based farming and that is when we realized and even they realized that this can be done and uh, with that uh, we have also started working with not just those by the way those 40 farmers have grown to 4000 farmers now in yavatmal district alone and then we started working in nellore district in andhra pradesh tumkur district in karnataka but along with that what we also started focusing on is the farmer producer organization fpo fpos are very effective tool for farmers to come together and then uh, leverage the bulk buying powers if you uh, remember there was a lot of row over the three laws that were being passed by the government of india three farm laws right and there was a lot of agitation uh, there are a lot of good things in those laws and we have done a detailed study i have notes on that and we also talk about those issues but there are also some gaps that are in those laws which are open for exploitation uh, government needs to clarify those things so engaging with government on in that manner is also something we have done but one of the biggest advantages that i saw of forming a fpo is for those three laws because your bulk buying powers are tremendously supported in those three laws so we we have been doing this for quite some time now but it further validates that if you get 200 300 farmers to work together as a team it gives them much better uh, leverage to talk to middlemen sell at a better price even buy uh, seeds at a better price so some of the examples in uttar pradesh we have uh, kala namak fpo in shohradgarh district of uttar pradesh so just for those of you who may not know this kala namak suggests it's a salt based something kala namak is actually a variety of rice that they produce it is very uh, unique to that region uh, to that soil and they have fpo that now actually has also got permission to export it worldwide so that's going to give them better yields and also give them better output right uh, in karnataka's uh, tumkur district tumkur is by the way 65 70 kilometers north of bangalore of bengaluru 
and that fpo is about 250 plus members strong they do organic farming vermi compost and i'll show you some of those photos as well but having uh, organic farming uh, means being able to focus on these different aspects of farming as well so monocropping was one that i mentioned the way to address that is to have these uh, drumstick cultivations so the way uh, a person can understand why grow drumsticks right in, if instead of that you are growing uh, sugarcane instead of that you are growing uh, some vegetables or instead of that you are growing uh, cotton right which are primary crops that many of the folks in marathwada and vidarbha take uh, why grow drumsticks so it is like this you can invest in stocks right and which will give you its high risk high gain kind of a scenario you can also invest in fixed deposit right and then it, it, that money is secured but the way most of us secure our financial future is we do both we take some risk calculated risk but we also keep some money safe in fixed deposit the reason i'm mentioning this example is that is exactly what organic uh, drumstick farming would be drumstick trees once you plant them for next 7 years they will give you 1 and 1/2 lakh rupees yield easily drumstick tree grows by itself you place them about 8 to 10 feet apart and they grow they provide lot of shade they don't require lot of water and the tree at least the rohit variety of drumstick that we work with in maharashtra last at least 7 years or more also but at least 7 years you have fixed income Uh, it costs you about nineteen thousand rupees to buy those saplings for one acre, and in one acre you put those saplings uh, about eight feet away. They are going to grow for seven years, giving you one and a half lakhs every single season. But beyond that, between the two trees, the eight feet distance that I told you about, you can grow uh, chilies, tomatoes, any of the other vegetable, uh, uh, eggplant, right, brinjal, whatever vegetables you want to grow that are not as tall. you can grow them and you can provide the same water source so with drip irrigation you can not only get drumstick you can also grow vegetables that further adds to the income and i will show you some of the amazing uses of uh, drumstick it's called moringa in uh, africa and it is a high protein content leaves we don't make uh, vegetable out of moringa leaves or drumstick leaves we primarily use the drumstick themselves Uh, but they are high protein uh, for uh, arthritis pain uh, there are some proven medicines that are made with drumstick so this is not only just edible vegetable it is also it has tremendous health benefits so that is uh, the other thing that i wanted to highlight for nellore we have done water conservation by desilting uh, three different villages got the help uh, thokalpudi anant maragu and uh, linga samudram Uh, again we have local volunteers local ngo that we work with uh, we uh, not only do these things with only one set for example here we did water conservation but we also help nine communities with the wells uh, and deepening and widening their wells we also created a seed bank and distributed seeds uh, to 33 farmer families who were in need of those seeds uh, we uh, kind of gave them benefits of organic farming and then slowly they started doing this this is work that is going on for last two years and now we are seeing the results we have also uh, built percolation tanks for, for water conservation there so th there are several different activities that happen when we start working with the village we don't just do one but we use that footing to do multiple different things to get the overall uh, quality of life in the villages improved uh next one organic kitchen gardens in bundelkhand i'm going to skip this in the interest of time i'm just looking at the clock uh, but basically this is in jalaun and tikamgarh districts uh, of uh, bundelkhand region just to give you an idea about what bundelkhand is because i i have noticed that not many people know other than the uh, name bundelkhand it's actually spanned across three different states it covers 12 districts and about 2 crore population so out of 100 crore people in india 2% of the people live in bundelkhand districts okay uh, those uh, 10 to 12 districts the interesting part it's frankly not something to be proud of but these are some of the poorest districts of india most of these districts have old men women uh, people who are disabled people who do not have jobs 
people who cannot leave villages most of the younger people younger family members go to cities like delhi noida uh, varanasi wherever jhansi to find work they will be the construction workers they will be the people pulling rickshaw they will do all the labor in cities and send money back home there is entire villages after villages that live off of that money so when you talk about creating self help group among those women and creating kitchen gardens where in their backyard we provide them with seeds and they can grow these things it actually does tremendous things to provide nutrition to the families because they are no longer having to just wait for that money order to come and that money can buy you only certain things right <laughs> self help group meetings uh, in uh, jalaun and then uh, nutrition garden uh, in sonepara sonepura village these are some of the photos i'll share this presentation with uh, apurva ji so she can share it with everyone uh, organic kitchen gardens in bundelkhand i already talked to you about that i'm sorry uh, the organic farming this is vermi compost in uh, tumkur district uh, near karnat uh, bangalore karnataka they also set up these vegetable stalls for people to directly come and buy organic vegetables from the farmers uh, this is uh, mr anand kumar uh, he is a secretary and a officer for uh, abishkar the ngo that we work with there these are the small meetings that they conduct among farmers to kind of go over the benefits of organic farming sustainability and livelihood uh, we do lot of things i will not talk about microfinancing we also uh, if there is a widow that has not received government help uh, for various reasons uh, then we will help them uh, 65 widows we have supported and in fact that's how i personally started my journey with uh, save indian farmers we have a helpline now in maharashtra as well as other parts of india we get about 20 to 30 calls per month a uh, lot of questions about drumstick cultivation uh, we have about 10000 visitors who come to saveindianfarmers.org every month so lot of questions we get from farmers through that as well and then because of our awareness campaigns people will call us and ask us questions that they have that if my soil is of this type can i take that particular crop you know they will ask us those questions we connect them with the experts but the goal is to not provide them with answers the goal is to provide them with solutions uh goats for livelihood support uh, i will not repeat mahatma gandhi ji's quote there but goats uh, four to five goats to a family can make a huge difference okay and if you if you want to help people uh, be self sustainable then you have to kind of think of uh, avenues like this uh, we have provided goats to uh, the family of uh, late satish meshram uh to anandabai dahekar uh, these are both families in uh, yavatmal and uh, washim districts of maharashtra uh, rural development uh, we do it through android tablets that are supported by mahindra and mahindra uh, through them we educate children during the school year and in the summer months we use the same tablets to educate people and farmers about water conservation about uh, organic farming we have translated videos from uh, professor uh, dr swaminathan uh, and his foundation into different languages like telugu marathi and so on the videos are in english originally but we uh, dub them in different languages for people to understand them uh, we do health camp as well hydroponics there is just tons of work happening there uh, i'll show you some of the photos there as well uh, this is how you grow maize sprout in about 10 days uh, this becomes green fodder it requires very little water Uh, because you can recycle the water and then uh, with these sprinkler systems at the top uh, the water is provided only where it is needed and then you can provide that fodder for the cows and other animals in the livestock okay uh, this is the person i wanted to tell you story about this is uh, simudhi geeta chincholkar so my journey and the foundation of seven indian farmers has a big impact of this person so when i was reading about the news stories in india this is 10 11 years ago uh, about farmer suicides and i found out the numbers uh, in government of india publishes those numbers since 1994 uh, national crime records bureau will give you that data and you can actually find out by district uh, by occupation uh, and by gender by age uh, how many people committed suicide and uh, in fact reserve bank of india also has published a report on what are the common causes of suicide 
so these are kind of all important information. Tata Institute of Social Sciences also has uh, a report published uh, as per the Supreme Court advice in a particular case about the farmer suicides and its impact on uh, overall rural life. But beyond those reports, beyond those data, when I started calling people and trying to find out, uh, the, uh, she's from Yavatmar uh, district, by the way, and I uh, started talking to people and I came to know about uh, her story. Uh, at that time, uh, Shriram Chinchulkar had just passed away. Uh, Geeta ji was about 30 years old, I would say. This is 10, 11 years ago I'm talking about. And her daughter Lakshmi was three years old, same age as my daughter Geetika at that time. And uh, she was not being accepted back in her family uh, because her in-laws thought that it was because of her that the husband committed suicide. And her own father wouldn't take her back because her younger sister was yet to get married. And she was basically outcast from her own village. And she was with her daughter without a roof on her head. And the question was, what can we do? So we got some time uh, by asking the neighbor to make her arrangement in the nearby shade for the uh, livestock. Uh, we call, the, call it gotha, right? So uh, she could get that. Uh, and then in that month or two months, what we could do is we could secure a place for her that uh, she could live in. Uh, we fixed the roof. Uh, roof was a big problem in that particular house. And then we gave her five goats. And she makes about 3,500 to 5,000 uh, rupees by selling milk and uh, goat dung, uh, which is also very useful manure, uh, is very useful fertilizer. But what I did not realize, there were three of them, uh, Gita Ji was one of them. But what I did not realize is the impact. The impact was not that she was living better. The impact was not that she had a roof on her head. The person who was not able to make eye contact with the rest of the world because she didn't think it was necessary for anybody to recognize uh, and anybody to even realize that she exists and she should live on. Now that person has a self-confidence. She's able to make an eye contact and talk to you. In fact, she talks to other widows and tells them that our husband has passed away. He has left us with these kids, whatever, son, daughter you have. We still have to live on and we still have to make sure their future is secure. But that confidence, when you give person goals, you don't give them goals, you give them that self-confidence. And that is a, this costs about 24,000 rupees, by the way. But can you set somebody's life and give them that confidence that they matter, that they should live on for the sake of their child and themselves? If the cost of that is one-time investment of 24,000, then Save Indian Farmers has done that. And that is frankly what started Save Indian Farmers as an NGO. We have helped multiple people. Uh, some of these have allowed us to share their stories and their photos. So Vandana Ji is another person I've met. Uh, when I get go there, I often meet with them uh, and I spend time with them. Uh, when I'm in India, I also uh, talk to the volunteers in India. So this is our Pune team. Uh, when I was there in Pune uh, more than a year ago now, uh, I had met with the volunteers team there. Uh, uh, Dalal uncle uh, at that time was the uh, kind of main managing director for Save Indian Farmers India. Now it is Dinar Walawalkar. Uh, some of the folks who have joined on this call, you will see Sachin Paranspe here. Uh, you will also see Dr. Ghumresh, she's a gynecologist, uh, Dr. Yashantra Yadav. Uh, but the goal is that uh, we shouldn't meet only because Hemant comes to India or somebody from US comes to India. But I'm encouraging all these individuals to meet among themselves, even on Zoom, and see how they can visit project sites when they can, uh, how they can uh, make an impact. And it doesn't matter where you are, the goal is to see how you can make an impact. But that was the rather long, continuous uh, presentation I wanted to make, just to give you an idea about the scope of different things. Uh, but I would like to see if there is any time and if there are any questions that people want to ask, people want to know. And not that I, I know all the answers, I'm, but I know. You know, Heman, I'm, it was an amazing presentation. It was detailed. It showed your passion for what you're doing. It showed your, your attention to detailing, which is very, very important. You're not doing work for the sake of doing work. You're really doing work because you believe in it.
and it should make an impact. Basically, whatever we do as Rotarians or as fellow NGOs, is that our work should have some impact. We want to do things which are really useful, which are uh, going to be uh, sustainable, impactful also, and which are needed by the public. Like Rotary, we always say that the, we should not go to the public with the project. The project has to come from the community. So the kind of work that you are doing, the expansive work that you're doing is really very community-based, need-based. So the uh, presentation was really, really amazing. I'm going to take the spotlight off you and put us on gallery view. So if people have questions, we can all uh, take the questions. Sure. Also, at the same time, I want to welcome all Rotarians who have come from Pune, Gothrud. Uh, A.G. Raj is here. Raji, welcome. A lot of my co-presidents are here. Shashikant is here. Dilip is here. Ashok is here. So welcome to everybody. Relatives, friends of Heyman. Uh, NGO workers. So, welcome to all of you. Ha, Sudhir, you have a question. Please unmute yourself. We have a president, uh, a president for the next year, next year, Sudhir, who has a question for you, Hemant. Uh, hello, Dr. Hemant. A wonderful work you are doing. Uh, the question I had was on the work you have done uh, on the three farm laws. You mentioned that you have done a study. Is this available on the uh, Save India Farmers uh, or the, uh, website? Or is there a link to that available? No, it is not. So these are my personal notes uh, oh. and we do this kind of internal sessions. But what I would do is I would also make the notes available because I published those notes. Uh, so it's Thank not you. like uh, private property. But yeah. uh, uh, my only request is uh, <clears throat> they will uh, look at the three laws in an apolitical way. So you yes. will see pros and cons of yes. all the uh, three laws mentioned. Especially the third law is very uh, minimal, but the first two laws you will see my notes about eight or nine pages. I'll share with Bhushan. Uh, and then Bhushan, if you please pass on to other people. Thank you. Sure. Uh, I think Hemant, uh, uh, Gautam has a question. Gautam, hi. Yeah. Uh, hi, Hemant. Good evening. Good evening. First of all, my compliments for the great work that you guys are doing. And I'm really proud that uh, we are able to, you know, uh, host you guys out here with us today. And, and the whole... Uh, conversation was really inspiring. Uh, uh, and I had a question. Just, if, I can, if I can take 30 seconds uh, of your time, uh, I'm equally inspired. Uh, I, I'll be honest with you. Uh, the reason I'm comfortably sharing this story with you all is because I'm aware of the magnitude of the work Rotary Club does, not just in India, globally. And okay. that's why I'm humbled by your comments. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you. Hemant, I had a question. Uh, sure. I'm sure after this discussion, I, I'm going to take it up with the president and our board member regarding mm -hmm. that help that you were seeking for BEAD, okay. your COVID center for BEAD, 6 lakh rupees, sure. right? Yes. So, I, I mean, um, uh, in case th there are individuals, so uh, while, while I was on this Zoom, I did chat with my school friends group yes. and I found there were a couple of guys who were interested. So I was wondering if uh, our club allows, we might collect that and uh, try to whatever fund we can uh, source it and uh, fund your. It would be uh, absolutely great, Nikki and Pooch Pooch. Yeah. So, and, and from everywhere are welcome. Gautam, I'll, I'll, I'll give you actually a suggestion. Uh, unsolicited yeah. one. Uh, I would recommend people to pull money together and uh, put it uh, towards some somebody like Rotary Club because instead of individual donations, if we pull our money and then support it as one organization, one unit. It is even better for us to ask them uh, fund utilization report, one. Second, it is even better for them to keep everyone up to date on what's happening with the money, right? Instead of sending right. it to 200 people, they would rather tell uh, a Rotary Club uh, or yeah, one or makes two. Sense. It becomes a little more transport. polarized and systematic also. Yeah, I agree. I agree. Apur, Apur, that was my first idea. So that's what I said. I mean, sure, we'll, take it up, does, we'll take it up. In case that doesn't work out, then then I do not did not also wanted to discourage people who wanted to contribute. So I was oh, asking yeah. whether it would be comfortable yeah. for uh, you guys to accept that. It is it is not my quote. Uh, somebody else has said this, but I'll repeat it for anybody who is listening here on this group that you don't need deep pockets to donate. You need longer hand. Right. So you reach hands. out wherever you can. Sounds like a rotary yes. only quoted it. <laughs> Thank you. Just Emma. go on the lighter side. Uh, there's a question from Paresh. Hi, Heman Dada. Quick question. Do you have any statistics where it depicts how it can how it can decrease the number of suicide? I think what he mentions is that do we have statistics as to what help can decrease? Uh, Paresh, can you unmute yourself and ask your question, please? Uh, sure, yeah. Hi. Hi, Heman Dada. Uh, Hi, so just uh, just to reiterate that question, so how do you 
is there any like data which helps us understand that this study you have done or this work that you have done has actually decreased the number of suicides in india or is this still uh, open thing it is still open thing uh, and all the uh, reports as of even last year uh, i think 2018 it was the last report published adsi accidental deaths and suicide uh, report of india is published by the central government you can still see, see that on national crime record bureau in crb uh, website and uh, you will get that information but uh, parish to tell you the truth uh, nobody uh, writes it here that they are about to do something drastic okay but i'll tell you what uh, we are able to see so uh, to answer your question in short uh, we are not able to avoid suicide but we are because suicide is a symptom not a root cause root cause is something else that they are not also, able to sell their also i think it's a very different phenomenon i'm sorry to interrupt but uh, i think uh, farmer suicide is not as you need to the cause as such the reason it could be a cumulative uh, result of many things it's uh, it's agrarian crisis they call it because it is a multitude of factors it's not just one it's not just the Absolute. cost of uh, farming it is not just the price yes, that yes. they are getting it is also dependence on the monsoon season all sorts of things that happen okay uh, but parish uh, what we have seen is uh, if uh, in the cases where uh, a farmer has approached us okay there are there are two or three cases i can tell you about in washington district there was a farmer who had attempted suicide and unfortunately uh, uh, when he did that his neighbors saw him and they saved him and when he found out for last 30 years he has been farming well he had 12 acre land so he is not a marginal farmer he is doing really well and uh, he had taken loan from uh, axis bank and uh, his uh, emi was going rate was going from 7% to 13 and 1/2% because he was not going to be able to make the payment and that's when he realized that he has no other means but to uh, commit that act when we came across that story we in fact contacted the district collector of uh, washim uh, Ra- uh, rahul duvedi was the district collector and rahul ji first was irritated that why is a person from america calling me for a person in my district who are you and why do you want to talk to me but after i explained to him and i told him that this is the situation and you can help he actually came forward and he wrote the letter to the axis bank manager uh, they waived his loan uh, they reduced it back to 7% they gave him one extra year to pay off and that farmer is doing well so uh, can we uh, that's a fantastic success story that? yeah but but that that is a success story in some ways but things like that are positive signs in my opinion great great thank uh, you hemant i think uh, rajiv bhai has a question rajiv yeah yeah uh, dr hemant i just wanted to understand about uh, borewell recharge you talked about yeah. like you know water conservation is a part of uh, like you know focus area in rotary is there any data available on borewell recharge like how many borewells in which particular area and how many of them needs recharge and how lengthy is that process so uh, the i can answer the last question first it takes about 7 to 8 days if the materials are available okay, okay. Uh, but it takes about 2 to 3 months to convince the farmer <laughs> <laughs> so so what we typically do is we don't do borewell recharge uh, say only one or two we usually take five or six farmers in same village uh, we will conduct these sessions uh, for a month two months we'll go there if there is enough interest then the representatives from sankalpur rural development society or in if it's in marathwada region then manulok has experts as well because you want people uh, who have done this before successfully to run it for you so either srds can do pretty much everywhere in india uh, they have people and resources to do it and uh, otherwise uh, manulok at least in bid district i have seen and in yavatmal there are, there is another ngo uh, i have seen those ngos also do a very good job of uh, keeping the costs down at the same time providing the solution that works but i can give you more stats and actually more details on that project mahesh wani is the project director and uh, they have done over 200 bore wells so far and there is a tremendous amount of uh, knowledge bank that we have created also so you will be happy to share those details with you yeah that will be great that will be great so we can take it up rajiv bhai right yeah i think we have already overshot our time the session has been absolutely enlightening uh before we move yes bhushan one question hemant why this 2 3 months are required to convince farmers uh there are two reasons one is uh, many people will come and promise them the world okay so but the, in reality like all the politicians go there and make speeches so even somebody from say indian farmers goes and makes speeches who knows 
what the right thing to do is. Who knows that we are truly beneficiary to farmers? Even they have to trust because us. The uh, most, trust, trust most bond common bond question bond. we get after the presentation, the most common question we get is, what is in it for you? How much money do you want? Because that's how they have been uh, trained. That's how the I mental understand. frame of mind that, works. That, that is one. The second is, you have to dig 18 feet by, uh, uh, at least 12 feet by 18 feet wide tank, which is 8 feet deep, to store water and then that gets conserved to the borewell, right? That means you are giving away your 18 feet by 12 feet land where you could grow crops. So farmers sometimes say, I don't want to lose my land. I'm already getting less crop. So those are the issues that they have. Sometimes it's not possible for them to put 11,000 rupees from their side, all those issues. But it takes two to three months, I have seen typically. Uh, the best time to convince farmers is uh, during summertime because uh, that's when they need it most. And if you talk to them at that time and they solve that problem, they see the results in the following monsoon. Okay. Yeah. So I think a lot of study of the farmer's mindset also goes into this whole thing. Is what yes. I'm realizing as you're speaking. We, we learn from the failures. Uh, I could uh, probably talk about the failure of our projects also someday uh, because we talk about it publicly for two reasons. One, that somebody else will learn from our failures. Okay. Uh, and then second, that uh, if we work on public funds, we are answerable to people. We are ready to experiment. We are willing to take the risk. But at the end of the day, it's a calculated risk. Sometimes it True. works and True. sometimes it's not. There are two projects that we have failed in and I talk about them as well. No, but that's okay because failure is a part of everything. There are no, there are no failures. Either there, are, either there is success or there is learning. Learning. And that's we have right. to abide by that. As, uh, as social workers, we have to abide by that. Uh, Ashish, you have a question? Uh, yeah. Well, Dr. Ahmed, uh, hats yes. off and salute to your noble work. Uh, basically, I'm looking for two questions. One is, uh, apart from uh, financial help, if somebody wants to join your uh, noble work as a volunteer, and, uh, how do you guide them? So, there, are, there, are, there is a positive thing and a negative thing about uh, volunteering for seven Indian farmers. Uh, positive thing is there is no uh, official ceremony process. Uh, you become volunteer by working. By, by being on WhatsApp group is one thing, but by actually doing the work. So you visit the project sites, you uh, come up with ideas. Most of the people who are project directors and every project that we have done are actually people who have volunteered. People who have come up with idea and said, okay, I have, I have this need from farmers, uh, either in my region or I, I was talking to a friend of mine in India and he told me about it. And then they take it up. They do the research. They uh, they uh, draw the project plan. They talk to farmers. They collect the information that we need. And then we start the project. This is one way of volunteering. The disadvantage is because we are volunteer driven, there is no formal structure. So long as it's one of the six initiatives that we focus on, we will take that project up. Because like Apurva also mentioned, right? we don't raise money beforehand. We have project and all the details. And then we go to people and raise money. So if you come to us and say, can you give me money for this? My answer is usually, I don't know. But every single project that we have taken up so far in last 10 years, we have been able to raise money for it. Fantastic. So that's also So uh, I think even if, when, if we come up with a really good uh, project, which just which aligns with, uh, say, Save Indian Farmers, then we can appeal to you for some help as Absolutely. well. Absolutely. So we can collaborate. We I, I, for I also project. talked to Smriti ji about it. I'm looking forward for that collaboration. Thank One you. of the Thank things so that much. Rotary has that we don't is uh, foot soldiers on the ground. I, I, I really... See, we we I have really manpower. Care. There is no doubt of manpower. Sometimes, you know, we need a little bit of uh, uh, help on terms of how to execute Absolutely. a project. If you've done it, some experience always helps in new areas or new forays that we would go into. So we'll definitely count upon you, Dr. Heman Zoshi, for any kind of agricultural project which aligns with uh, oh, save Indian that, farmers. That, that, can I say something about Heman? Yeah, sure, Surendra. Heman, the Tuja Baban Kanda, Zo Sagana Madat Kanda, the Gune, so Tuja Talele, and I'm really proud of you. And you are doing excellent work, and I'm sure you will continue doing this for a very long time. So, Absolutely. Uh, congratulations. In continuation of what Pastor and Surendra said, I would like to, because you said you don't want to be felicitated. So we're not going to give you a felicity certificate. It's going to be an e-certificate of appreciation. So let me just share screen and I can read it out to you. Sure. 
Where is my desktop gone? Here it is. Give me a moment. Certificate of Appreciation, Rotary Club of Thane Suburban. This certificate is awarded to Dr. Heyman Zoshi for your outstanding contribution in conducting the session on the topic, Joy of Giving, dated 10th May 2021, signed by Rotary Napura Vaidhi, that is me, Club President 2020-21, and Rotary Hirendra Chatterjee, Club Secretary 2020-21. So it's a very small thing on our behalf, actually. Uh, when you come to India, let us have a session in person and where we will felicitate you properly in the way you really deserve. Please continue with this good work. Uh, keep inspiring us. Keep uh, motivating people like us to do better work. And you're doing it long distance, which makes it all the more special, actually. So thank you so much, Dr. Himan Zoshi. I now request, Rajiv, do you want to uh, make the announcements for 17? And DTA, I appeal to you, but yeah. I think you had got cut off. Yeah, yeah. actually, our DG, Dr. Mayuresh Warke, wants to interact with the BOD. So the time slot given to us is on Monday, 17th May, between 5 to 6 p.m. So I would request all BOD members to be available on that particular date. It be an informal meeting, but uh, like, you know, if they want, he just wants to have a one-to-one -one interaction with board members. And about DTA, it is on 23rd Sunday, 23rd May, starting from 9.30 onwards. Detail agenda and uh, it will be purely on Zoom. And uh, detailed agenda would be shared on Monday itself in the second hour. Thank, thank you, you, thank you, thank you, um, uh, President elect. And I now request uh, Joint Secretary Ashish to please uh, propose the formal vote of thanks. I will be sending the recording to everybody tomorrow as soon as I do it. And uh, it will be a really a wonderful thing to keep repeating and seeing the presentation again. So, Ashish, the vote of thanks, please. Thank you, President. Uh, thank you, Mr. Dr. Heman Joshi, for your wonderful session. And it was really a joy attending the same, apart from your topic, Joy of Living. And we uh, thank you from the bottom of our heart. And we wish you all the best to continue the same thing in future. You're most welcome to India whenever you have time. And we would like to meet you in person and uh, take more inputs from you in terms of uh, society upbringing. Thank you very much. Good day. Thank you all for your participation you. and sparing your precious time. Thank you so much. And uh, Heyman, you are most welcome to join us for our Chatter Night celebrations in which we are going to be crooning our way to Panchamda songs. So I don't know how inspiring that can be to everybody to become singers, but we have some fantastic artists with us. So guys, start preparing for your Panchamda night. Yes, and uh, a rock. surprise is going to come your way. Ashish, I don't have any surprise. I don't have any surprise. Let it be a surprise. Sure, sure, sure. Bhushan, tell yeah, uh, before concluding, I must say I am proud of Himan because he has done our Saraswati school proud. Uh, and second thing, uh, Apurva, I am uh, giving, uh, I am forwarding my commitment of rupees 50,000 tomorrow oh, to you for uh, Yavatmala project. And so that we can transfer it to Yavatmala project in due course of time. See, President's mind has gone from year to year. President getting money, Rajiv bhai, dekho, smile mein kitna farak padcha hai. Pehle aise rehta hai, then money is coming in. It goes till here. And I do for good work. So thank you very much, Bhushan. Thank you, Heyman. Thank you, everybody. Good night. Stay safe. Stay Take indoors. Care. Yeah. Take care. Bye. I'll send the recording, Heyman, to Bhushan. Yeah. Bhushan will give it to you. Yeah. Nice meeting you all. Bye. Same here. Thank you. Good evening.